Well, joining me right now is royal biographer Angela Levin. A good morning to you. Hello, nice Thanks. to see you. Lovely to see you as well. Now, I mean, there's a suggestion sort of from palace sources, also suggestions from obviously Prince Harry, this idea, you know, he could, he wanted a rapprochement with the, with the king, uh, particularly at the time with him being diagnosed with cancer, but also that he could, he could be some use at all. But it's been really, that idea has been completely shut down. Why do you think that is? Well, because it's sensible to do that. You can't have someone working uh, and now occasionally a morning here, a day there. It's absolute nonsense. First of all, he lives far, far away. Secondly, he may be able to gather information that will make another documentary. We have to remember that he cannot be trusted. After the late Duke of Edinburgh's a funeral, um, the, the then Prince Charles said to both his sons, look, please don't, you know, be difficult with me in my last years, right? And that's not something you pass on, even if you're an ordinary family, yeah. to tell other people that. You know, it was um, leaking in the, in the most enormous way. And you can't trust somebody who's doing that. I remember at the coronation, one of the royals said that um, the only thing we're going to be able to talk about with Harry is the weather. So there we are. He, he can't do that. Yeah, and he's already a busted flush on that. Can we know that Prince William has certainly been made it really clear? Um, again, we know. I say we know. We understand from royal sources who we know are well placed, etc., etc., that that he's basically said there is no way back. But it's interesting what kept what emerged in the last few days that that Prince Harry, when he turned up from California to visit his father, um, knowing about the diagnosis, he had the phone call obviously before it was made public that he had expected to travel to Sandringham with his father and spend some time with him. Um, and it was Palace at Flunkies, Palace Aids, who went. No, no, you're meeting him in Clarence House, you know, or Buckingham Palace, wherever it was, for 30 minutes, and then he's leaving. And they basically didn't want him to be alone with the king for very long. That is a, such a breakdown of trust, isn't it? Well, it was also a thing saying uh, we didn't want to get rid of him. It wasn't so much breakdown of trust. It's just they didn't want him hanging around for days, gathering information, making a, a story for himself. Um, I quite agree with that. It's, it's very sensible. And if you look at... Uh, William, how dignified he was last night. It must have been very difficult for him. He's leaving his wife, who's obviously still not better, alone. And he can't forgive Harry for what he said about her. Really nasty things written in his book, Spare. And um, he, he, he doesn't want to be with him. He's somebody who's moving on. Um, yeah. He does think to his mother by making houses, but in, in his um, in Cornwall that he now owns, it's worth a billion, and he's going to turn lots of them for the homeless, which he knows that was his mother's great um, ambition. And here we have Harry moaning, groaning, and doing all sorts of ridiculous things that Meghan tells him. Yeah. Well, so, can, can I just um, say, by the way, on the Prince William thing, A, it's his job to turn up. He's not leaving his wife alone. They've got a whole team of staff. And B, I know he's inherited this billion-pound estate, so plus, uh, you know, he, he also didn't pay, uh, as did King, King Charles not, didn't pay the same uh, inheritance tax that anyone else would pay uh, in, uh, inheriting that. So, you know, if he really cares about people being homeless and things, pay a bit more tax would be one of my suggestions. Not that the government would do anything useful with it, but, no, I'm not... I'm just, I just want to get that, because I really do think we need to call... Out, we should call out the royals for hypocrisy as just much as we call out politicians. Let's talk, though, about, like, King Charles, because we know he's undergoing this treatment for cancer, and there has been this view that, you know, he should be left... I think as all families should. You know, Princess of Wales to recover from her surgery. We still don't even know what that surgery was. King Charles to recover from the can would be treated with the cancer treatment that we again we don't know what cancer it, it is. But is there are there any plans for Prince Harry to come back at all? Because I would have thought the one thing someone might like if they were you know elderly and being treated with cancer would be to I don't know see their grandchildren occasionally, which of course Harry doesn't allow Charles to see. Well, I think that that's Meghan, isn't it? I mean, she hates the UK. She doesn't like the royal family. And um, she doesn't want to bring them over. So if Harry did come to do, you know, the slightest bit of work, 
the children wouldn't come with him. He's had lots of opportunities to bring them, yeah. but he hasn't. And for some reason that they want to keep them absolutely secret. Now, it is very sad that they don't know anyone from Megan's side apart yeah. from Megan's mother, and they don't know anyone from the other side. So they call them prince and princess. I think he's a real burden for them. If they go to school, children are not nice about things like that. They might feel different. They might feel in embarrassed um and it would be it's very very hard well, to we do know that why they, we know where they got titles come on angela levin so good to talk to you royal biographer of course of prince harry and of camilla as well